In this video, we'll learn about how two sets of concepts, energy and power, and current and voltage are linked together. Upon completion of this video, you should be able to explain power as determined by voltage and current, define and explain electrical resistance and Ohm's law, and explain how light produces current carrying electrons and holes in a photovoltaic cell when exposed to sunlight. First, let's return to a simple circuit we explored in an earlier video. Suppose now that there is a voltage V sub AB between points A and B and a current I is flowing in the conductors as shown. The current must be at the same at all points in the upper conductor or else charge would accumulate in the conductor. The current out of element 1 must be equal to the current in element 1 or else charge would accumulate in element 1. The current must be the same at all points in the lower conductor, or else charge would also accumulate. And of course, the current out of element 2 must be equal to the current into element 2. Suppose that the voltage V sub AB is positive and the current I is positive. This means that the charges coming out of element 1 at the top have more potential energy than the ones going in the bottom. Therefore, element 1 is supplying energy to the circuit. This energy may be coming from chemical energy, if element 1 is a battery, from mechanical energy, if element 1 is a generator, or from light, if element 1 is a solar cell. Likewise, the charges going into element 2 at the top have more potential energy than the ones going out of the bottom. Therefore, element 2 removes energy from the circuit. This energy may become mechanical energy if element 2 is a motor, or light if element 2 is a light bulb, or heat if element 2 is a heater. All of the energy that enters the circuit through element 1 must leave through element 2. There is a set amount of current that leaves element 1 in charges per second, I. And since element 1 gives a certain amount of energy per coulomb to those charges, V sub AB, the rate at which element 1 gives energy to the circuit is V sub AB times I. This is also the rate at which energy leaves the circuit through element 2. We have already seen that energy flow per second is power. Since the unit of power is a watt, a volt times an amp equals a watt. From the perspective of a circuit, the important parameters are the voltages between its connection points and the currents at its connection points. In other words, voltages are measured across elements, currents are measured through conductors or into and out of elements. For most elements, there is a range of possible voltages and currents that the device can have. However, the voltages and currents of an element must obey a relationship that is different for different elements. For some elements, especially ones with more than two connections, these relationships can be fairly complicated. The relationship of voltage and current for a specific element often depends on the temperature and may also depend on light exposure, the past history of the element, and other parameters. All of the voltage-current relationships of all of the elements must be satisfied at the same time. We call figuring out the voltages and currents that satisfy all of these requirements solving the circuit. Fortunately, for an element with only two connections, there is only one voltage and one current to worry about. Circuits with elements with more than two connections are much more complicated to solve, and sometimes it can take some time. Somehow, the circuit solves it very quickly. Computers are widely used for calculating the voltages and currents in circuits. In general, for elements that remove energy from a circuit, the higher the voltage between the contacts, the more current flows into the higher voltage contact. The voltage across the device acts a lot like pressure across a section of water pipe. The greater the pressure difference, the greater the flow. For some two-element devices that remove energy from the circuit, the voltage across the device is proportional to the current flowing through it. This is called Ohm's law. We call the ratio of the applied voltage to the current the resistance. Resistance acts like friction for electrical current. The higher the resistance, the less current that can flow for a given voltage. Two element devices that are sold specifically for their resistance are called resistors. Resistors are widely available in many sizes. The energy that resistors remove from a circuit is given off as heat. 
For a resistor in its range of operation, the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance, or the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms, where 1 ohm is a volt per amp. Resistance and resistors can be helpful. For example, electrical heaters are giant resistors. Resistors are also used to limit the current flowing in a particular part of a circuit. Resistance is sometimes unhelpful. Metal wires are used as the conductors and currents as we have been discussing, but they are not perfect conductors. Rather, they have a small amount of resistance in them. The resistance is determined by the length and thickness of the wire. As we will see, sometimes we need the thicker wires to reduce the resistance of long wires. In a resistor's range of operation, the current is proportional to the voltage. We can draw a graph of the current in the resistor as a function of voltage as shown here. This results in a straight line as a result of Ohm's law. As for all the elements, the power flow is equal to the voltage times the current. For a resistor, power is removed from the circuit and becomes heat. Since the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance of the resistor, we find that the power is also the voltage squared divided by the resistance or the current squared times the resistance. For elements that supply power to a circuit, the current eventually goes down as the voltage becomes higher. The reason is that there is only so much power the element can supply to the circuit. It is limited in part by how much power the element can get from wherever it is getting power. In a circuit, the current voltage relationships of all of the elements and also the laws of circuits must be satisfied at the same time. The circuit operates in the condition in which all of these requirements are satisfied. When we talk about solving a circuit, we mean finding the voltages and currents that satisfy all of the requirements mathematically. This can be difficult for complicated elements and sometimes requires a computer. Somehow, when you build the circuit, the electrons find a solution very quickly.